This week on Dr. Drew After Dark. So after a while, it won't be uncomfortable anymore. Eric is absolutely right that, that most of the most of the anxiety type disorders, which include obsessive compulsive disorder, and yep. if you have some of that, I got some of that too. I yes. got it. Throw yeah. some of that on yeah, there. We I got it all. That. Fort Wadsworth. What is I took that? the pictures of my wedding day there uh, to a woman. Um, and I know what people are thinking. You ever had a panic attack? I am almost an expert on anxiety. Me too. Yeah. I have generalized anxiety disorder and panic. Oh, I have generalized. Hey, all right. Hey, good times. GAD, baby. Let's good do it. Good times, right? <laughs> Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey everyone, welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Phone number is 818-253-1693. And those emails, keep them coming at Dr. Drew After Dark at gmail.com. Rational Revolution, everybody. Don't forget the Rational Revolution gear. Is that still for sale, gentlemen? It's stored.ymhstudios.com. Uh, store I, I love I'd use that cup. I have that cup in front of me all the time. Uh, I love all that uh, sort of uh, Soviet era imagery. <laughs> it's just, I love it's, me some propaganda. Well. Oh, it's become more pertinent than ever. Just saying. Today, the guest is Eric D'Alessandro. You can find him at his Instagram and all his social media sites at Eric with a C D A L A E S S A N D R O. Wow, thank you. He is. Uh, <laughs> Responsible for a YouTube channel where he has honed his comedic skills through various uh, skits and and uh, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We are imitate imitations of other people. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Tell us about it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I I should be way larger on YouTube. I was like before the whole movement and like when I was like 19, like in 2009, and then I made the mistake of a lot of people like me where it's like oh, I want to be a real actor or comedian and there was like this I felt that in Hollywood there was like this derisive attitude towards content creators. Little did you know you were the future. Little did I know that I, if I would have known uh. but I'm not smart so uh, yeah like I kind of like took the back seat tried to do like the quote unquote real thing mm. and just wasted a lot of time. I mean the real thing that nobody's watching anymore. Exactly. Okay that that's right yes. uh -huh. and until I realized that yeah did uh, I just kind of stood stagnant. But then when I um, started to take like my career in my own hands, that's when everything started to change for me uh, on the internet, which was just like Instagram kind of went in insane for me. And it, and it led to, uh, yeah, people buying tickets to shows and just, uh, you know, hanging out with Dr. Drew. And Here we are now. Some studio Daddy in Daddy Drew, show me how you sound that big hog. What the hell is that? I'm sorry, I, I, I say stuff on this show that I have wow. no idea why I'm saying it or when hog. I said. I love a big we're just hog. Getting, we're just getting started. Tell me more about that. <laughs> but anyway, um, so you come from a large Italian family, right? I do. That's right. By law, if you're Italian, the family has to be large. I, by large, are we talking six kids, eight kids? Um, so I'm only one of four, but my uh, mom is only. one of one of eleven. Oh, uh, there you go. So yeah, I just I. I so a million aunts and uncles, a million, million aunts cousins. and uncles, a million cousins. I had to hit the lottery just to have my cousins at my wedding. Um, and uh, yeah, now my siblings, I'm one of four, but they already have, I think we're expecting, my, my brother and my sister-in-law are expecting their fourth. Oh my goodness. Which we, I think we're going to have nine or ten. Do they still live in New York? Everybody They're else? all within walking distance to our childhood home uh, in, in Staten the, Island. I was going to say, it's got to be Staten Island. It's but, Staten Island, so yes. What part of Staten Island? I'm from the North Shore of Staten Island, which is not where like the stereotypes are known. Like I actually saw black people growing up. <laughs> where if you're from the South of Staten Island. Only Italians. Yeah, there's only <laughs> just other Italians, which uh, it's a beautiful area. But yeah, mine's, when you, when, you, when you hang out like where I'm from, I'm acting like I'm from Harlem, but I'm, but you know, if you hang out where I'm from, like in Port Richmond, like the North Shore area, is that near the bridge? Yeah, it's closer yeah. to the north. There's yeah. way every. It's very much New York City. Like yeah. it's like you're in Brooklyn. There's there's every ethnicity. I've always why you maybe you can help me with something. Yeah, when you come off the, I'm blanking the name of the Arizona bridge. 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 There's like a fort off to the right there. Correct. What, what is that? Fort Wadsworth. What is? I that? took the pictures of my wedding day there, uh, to a woman, <laughs> um, and I know what people are thinking. Um, it's it's a it's got a lot of history actually. I'm guessing it looks yeah. like it's 300 years old. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure the revolution. I'm I'm gonna be wrong on this, but I'm pretty yeah. sure was it the when did like I it's, think it was the Revolutionary War. Yeah, it's got to be because the one because the Fort Clinton across the bay is. Revolutionary. You lost me. 
Where, where, where <laughs> you get Staten Island Ferry? Yeah, yeah, I'm joking. I'm okay, joking. okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. the like the ships the British sent out to burn Manhattan to the ground yes. came from Staten Island, I believe. Oh, perfect. Like it, there's a conference house all the way in the south of Staten Island where where George Washington had a. A meeting. Press conference. Yeah, something. Or was it, he right. was explaining, he was apologizing for his dick pics that went viral, I think. Uh, so oh, we've look, been... They, they put the Verrazano Bridge up there. Look, look at and now, now people from Staten Island love this bridge. My parents took the most Brooklyn picture of all time. It's them like looking over the bridge at like a sunset. It's very, uh, you know, Tony Monero. It's very Bay Ridge, Bensonhurst. Uh, look bridge. at that bridge. Yeah, I mean, come on. That's a nice bridge. Yeah, it beat the ferry too. The ferry's a little bit cumbersome. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. So that's a great part of town. And uh, Staten Island, I... <laughs> my rela- Have you been to Staten Island? Yes. My relationship with Staten Island is I did a bunch of television with the mob wives. Of course you did. Of course I did. Yes. And But what we were doing, I was doing this HLN program. And uh, first of all, they took me to dinner. We went to the big Italian stuff. Mm-hmm. We went to the the drunken monkey. That, okay. That big Angels the Angels had. Yeah. And, uh, and what we were reporting on was the uh, Sandy. Was the house, there was a, big, a lot of flooding? Yes. And uh, then we were mm-hmm. talking to people who had been through all that. Yeah. So that the was miserable. That was really nasty. Yeah. Thanks for bringing the mood down. No, no I'm just saying. All right, um, let's go back to your YouTube page, <laughs> Maria Marie. What's yes. that? Okay. So that's basically how I got my first following on the internet. Mm-hmm. It was Staten Island is a very specific. You know, it's a very wonderful place. Yet insane and strange and everything and like i've always felt like a big part of my act uh i just filmed my special in november which maybe we could talk thank you and a a large part of like my point of view in comedy is like i never really fit into the staten island stereotypes even though i look super italian and i'm sure if we talked for a while you could find a lot of things to make fun of and i am stereotypically italian uh staten island but like not I, not not hardcore stereotypical. Not really. Yeah, yeah like my mother was always on me for my grammar. Yeah, she was yeah. always rec- it's it's Michael and I. Yeah, yeah right. And then I go to Mike's house. His mom's like, "You don't want no more ronies." Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh my god, that was a double negative." Your mom must be so embarrassed. <laughs> so um, that's a lot of my like that's a lot of like my comedy. So Maria Marie's Sweet Sixteen was a video that I did when I was 19. Just basically making fun of all the Sweet Sixteens that I've been at. Uh, like th- there was this, there was this uh, our community television, like Wayne's World, where we would watch, and this guy that you'd hire, his name was Joey G. Shout out to Joey G. He looks like Ric Flair. I think he is Ric Flair. Um, he would, you'd hire him to record your bar mitzvahs, your, your weddings, and then stuff put it like up that. on Staten Island television. And then he'd put it on Staten Island television. Oh, that's so, funny. so my friends back in the day when I was like six, 16 would hit me up on the next tell. The, like, like, yo, you watching this? <laughs> and it'd be like me dancing at my friend's Sweet 16. Oh, and they funny. were all the exact same party. Yeah. Almost, almost the same speeches for the mom, the yeah. same speeches for the boys and the candles. So I just made this whole production making fun of like the whole ridiculousness. And that like exploded. Uh. Like it only got like 50,000 views back in the day, but I think 49,000 of them came from Staten Island. Of course, of course. And Brooklyn and Jersey. So like, uh, yeah, that that sort of set up the rest of like my life kind of. Which are you going to go back to Staten Island? Is that the plan? Or are you going to go um, somewhere else in New York? I don't know. I'm, I'm there all of the time. Um, to visit your family? To visit my family, to do work, to like, you know, do spots in the city or if I have a show uh, somewhere around there. Uh, um, yeah, I was literally just there last week. Do you have favorite um, spots in the city where you perform? Uh, New York Comedy Club. I do I do uh, this this show Monday night. Sometimes I hop on at the cellar uh, with a great comedian, Ryan Reese, who hosts it. And uh, yeah, really anywhere I, anywhere I can. That's why I'm also trying to go back to New York probably soon, just to get more involved in that scene. I got a lot of friends in comedy there. And they're always like, you got to move back here. You got to move back here. Mm. Um, and we'll see I, the housing market. I'm just, I've been told the bubble is going to burst and I'm just sitting here waiting, chewing my yeah, gum. I think rents may be more sensible than purchase. Yeah. Right now. I mean, yeah. and it makes sense, especially in Texas, you know, I, I love our place. We're really comfortable. And as soon as I go back home, it's just, it's insane. It's yeah. a New lot York, of, New York is you know, nuts. it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Well, we're going to watch some videos. We're going to take some calls. All right. We're going to help some people. All right. Let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, all right. Forrest is going to start us off with an interesting question. Forrest, go ahead. Yes. Hi. How are y'all doing today? We're good. What's happening? Oh, just working. Calling to ask about after having sex. So our, my wife and I have sex. Life is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but wanting to improve. Let's say uh, 
after orgasm, you want to uh, recover quickly. Is there any <clears throat> tips or tricks to doing that? It's in order to regain your erection or in order to be able to orgasm again or either or both? Uh, I guess both, yeah. Well, the being able to orgasm more quickly is a little tougher order than regaining erection. You you have a refractory period, my friend, and men, women, some women don't have a refractory period. They can orgasm multiple times, but men almost always have a refractory period. It's on the order of ten to thirty minutes, and it just is what it is. You're looking in, in curious. Oh, I just don't know what that word means. Refractory means it's where you you're shut down and you can't get aroused again. Okay. Uh, the only way I can think of around that is with medication like Viagra, that kind of thing. You can get persistent erection. Uh, or at least mm. more easily to get the erection, but the orgasmic function is not going to come back any easier. That's just that's just uh, your biology, whatever it is. Some guys can go repeatedly. As you get older, that goes away. <laughs> so it depends how old you are and what your underlying biology is. Any any other thoughts? Do you watch a lot okay, of porn? Awesome. Do you watch a lot of porn? No, actually, we because our sex life is so great, we uh, right. we don't have don't have to use any of it. <laughs> It, well, that is another way to recover quicker, by the way, is to have sex less frequently, which is not necessarily what you're looking for, but that's that's a way to sort of recover more quickly. I mean, how fast are we talking that you're trying to turn over? I mean, do, do, are you just are you down on a Gatorade and you want to go again, or can you give it ten minutes? I mean, that would be fine, but I'm sure ten minutes would be plain. No, and I mean, giving it ten thirty minutes, I'll just have to see how I feel. Maybe we had to get at what the issue is here. Is it that your wife isn't orgasming, and you'd like to give her an orgasm with intercourse? No, no, I'm actually one of the very few lucky men that she has orgasms via intercourse. Okay, uh, is very easily stimulated, so that's not a problem. Okay, uh, it is strictly me just being like, I would like to go again because I know she can. Oh, I see. But she's satisfied mm. afterwards. I it's see. Not, it's not like she. She could or could not. It's so, kind of a, so a selfish thing. Like, here's another thing you here's another thing you could do, is you could uh, it, mm -hmm. you know get a bullet out of the chamber beforehand, ejaculate beforehand, like an hour or so before, so you can regain your your erection. But you may not regain your orgasmic function, and she may not like that. Women kind of like it when they can bring you to climax, okay. just the way we like it too as men. And so you can try that kind of stuff. But it, it's you know one of the things that one piece of advice I always give is talk to your partner. Mm. Make sure it's really what she wants, because we as men always are scheming in our head, like, if I could only go for an hour, it'd be the greatest thing. Yeah. Meantime, she's like, no, three minutes is fine. Thank you. Yeah. There's plenty. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, You're bleeding, honey. Exactly. It just make sure it's what your partner <laughs> wants. And, and if it's what you want, make sure that she's on board for it. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're feeling like you're constantly putting other needs before your own, you find that you're struggling to balance your time between trying to take care of yourself and taking care of others, it's a common issue many of us face. But it is essential to prioritize self-care and boundaries in order to avoid burnout and maintain your own mental health. BetterHelp helps you find balance in your life. It's easy to get caught up in everybody else's stuff, never take a moment to think about what you need, but we spend all our time giving. That's why I recommend therapy as a tool to help you find more balance in your life better boundaries. Therapy can give you skills and tools you need to prioritize your self-care. You can keep supporting others without being depleted by them. It's not just for those who have experienced trauma. Therapy can benefit anyone who wants to improve their mental health and well-being. If you are ready to take that first step towards prioritizing your mental health, I recommend trying BetterHelp. It's an entirely online therapy platform that's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist who can help you work towards your mental health goals. And if you ever want to switch therapists, you just go do so with no additional charge. Remember, taking care of yourself isn't selfish. It's important. Give yourself permission to prioritize your well-being. Take care of your body. Take care of your mind. Take care of your brain. Better help. Start your mental health journey today. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash After Dark today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash After Dark. Just want to take a second to give a huge shout out to members of our team at your mom's house who work tirelessly behind the scenes. Our shipping manager, without these folks, our business simply would not be able to function. They work long hours to ensure our orders are shipped out quickly and efficiently handle all the logistics that go into getting our products into the hands of our customers. But we could not do it alone. We rely on the support of companies like Stamps.com to help us get the job done. For the last 25 years, Stamps.com has been helping businesses like ours 
save time and money on their postage needs. They offer premium discounts, great rates. You can focus on what you do best, running the business, knowing all the while our postage needs are just taken care of. Are you tired of running to the post office every time you need to ship a package? Do you want to save time and money on your postage needs? Then it is time to try Stamps.com. With Stamps.com, you have a post office right in your own office. All you need is a computer and a printer. They even send you a free scale to get started. You can easily schedule package pickups and seamlessly connect with every major marketplace and shopping cart if you sell products online. So what are you waiting for? Let Stamps.com be postage partner and take hassle out of shipping. Try it today and see how it can transform your business. Take the first step towards success for your business by signing up with Stamps.com today. As a special offer for our listeners, Stamps.com is offering a four-week trial that's free postage and a free digital scale, all with no long-term commitments or contracts. Simply go to stamps.com slash Dr. Drew to sign up and take advantage of this exclusive offer. Thanks to stamps.com for sponsoring the show and helping businesses like ours save time and save money on their postage needs. Uh, all right, I want you to help Nathan out here. Nathan, what's going on? Hey, Dr. Drew. Um, how's it going, Eric? We're good, hey, man. Uh, in the past, you've asked about uh, people that are having issues with dating. Yeah. Uh, like when Christina was on, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a bit of an old school kind of person and I'm, I'm 25. I'm, uh, divorced. I'm having a hard time with trying to date nowadays. Back in high school, it was easier because everyone was kind of there, but nowadays everyone's doing the online dating kind of thing. And even when we go out to the bars, especially where I'm at, no one really talks to each other. And I just wonder if you have any advice for, I don't know, just kind of, Dealing with this new culture of online dating. How old are you? How old are you, Nathan? Having to text the conversation. He's yeah, it's talking like he's seventy-five. Okay. Well, because he's from Utah. <laughs> oh. That's why. That that that's an LA ninety. Oh no. So what do you think? So how does a twenty-five-year-old? Were you out in the dating scene recently? Me no. I've been with my wife for a long. We uh, yeah. I've been with her for a long time. Um, twenty-five in Utah. Oh and man. Divorced. Divorced. And divorced. Yeah. I mean. That seems like a. I wouldn't mind being in this guy's shoes. Uh, I feel like that'd be a lot of fun. There's got to be a lot of, you know, Mormon women at the grocery store. Um, but I don't know. I I, I really wear. I I have this. My, my wife and I joke around sometimes. Like it would be so much fun to see what dating in this decade is like. I mean, I've been with her for ten years. Oh goodness! So you really so been, I really don't even know what Tinder is like. How old do you know? I'm 33. Yeah. So. Yeah. You maybe got a little exposure maybe when you're younger, but yeah, definitely. It's like a little yeah. it, the, the social media, but not never like the apps. I mean, I, I, it seems like a lot of fun, but if he's he's looking for something more serious, maybe it could be a little annoying. So Nathan, where can you? Hmm, I don't want to out you, but are, are you in a major city? Are you because Utah's only got a couple of big cities? Yeah. Uh, so there's a, there's a main valley that has about 85 percent of the population of Utah. I'm just outside of it to the south. Okay. But I do work up in the valley, so I commute about an hour up in the valley every day. And, so. and it, I, I want to, yeah, I try to zero in on what your issue is. You're, you're having trouble meeting people. Is that what it really boils down to? Uh, not really. I, it's, it's, Hey, I, hey, I, hey, Nathan, I Nathan, 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 Nathan. Sounds like you're. Yeah, can you a, get out of the bathroom? You get, you get on the speaker, not on the speaker phone. I mean, I, I mean oh, get, on yeah. the, 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 get off the speaker phone, I should say, because it sounds like I can barely hear what you're saying. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, that better? Way better. So, go ahead. What's the problem? Yeah, sorry. Um, I am not good at the uh, texting conversations and trying to like. Uh, talk to people through text over the apps and everything yeah and then getting that to the point of a date i see um, i see so how does he play the game is the question i know that's the most yeah. annoying thing in the world yeah. i know i know that's it yeah how do you how do you play the app game how do you play this well maybe you should try social media how did what did you when you said social media what did you mean by that um would you I, just dm people you sort of got attracted to or would you what would, yeah i have a i, I it's I, I had advantages though that you know, like I said, I, I was you were I, out there. I, I was like known yeah, uh, like yeah. a little bit, so yeah. it was a little. I can't even you know. I would just sound like an asshole if I tried to. Yeah, but, but if somebody's going to use social media, is there a strategy to that? I, I don't. I don't see how there's not. I mean, you can really. Uh, pe people like. To, I, mean, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird too that you could like look through like their. It's it's very strange. You you can <laughs> right. see all kinds Their of life. here's me in a dentist coat. <laughs> like it's just a little, uh, you know. Um, yeah, I, I I sympathize with him because I don't really know the, the, the games are. The more upfront you are with women, the less they 
like it. Oh, interesting. Right? It's that, more, I don't like the games. They're like, yeah, me neither. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to playing games. <laughs> they they love the games. They love to. Uh, everything's a riddle. You're constantly being tested. You know, well, I said I was hungry, but you're supposed to know that that meant I was going to be hungry later. And, and it's all this I, fucking... I think, I think the really interesting thing is they think men are playing games. Oh, yeah. And I we, know. And we got, we got like, we're not, we don't even know how to do that. Yeah. Let alone interest in I it. know. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Me want food. That's <laughs> right. literally, I mean, right. if... Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah. I don't know. I, I'm sorry, my friend. He, his call dropped off. I, I don't know what happened to him, but but I would... Uh, he, fell out, he fell into that valley. That's what yeah, I Yeah. Like. Yeah. There's really... It, it, I know a lot of people do not have success with the dating apps. There's a small percentage that does, and then there's everybody else. I feel like they're more hooking up dates, uh, hooking and, up and, apps, the, and right? even that percentage that is getting hooking hookups up. is just getting hookups, and everybody else is not even having yeah. success. So I, I would, you know, it's just old fashioned ways of meeting people, friends of friends, go date. I, the advice I always give people is develop the skill of dating. Forget all the online texting and all that nonsense. Develop this the ability to human ask interaction, it. and and just yeah. and don't think of it in terms of this is going to be the greatest thing. Just think in terms. Of, I just going to have a nice evening and spend time with somebody. Yeah. Learn about them. Learn about myself. And if it, we have a second date, great. But don't put any expectation on it. And just develop that skill of asking people out and going on dates. May I have this dance? Yeah, people don't do that anymore. They and it really, it's anymore. way. It's fun. It's fun. You don't yeah. have to make it a big deal. Uh, let's get to Ricardo here. Let's see what Ricardo is up to. Hi, Ricardo. What's going on? Hey, Dr. Drew. How are you? Good. What's up? Hey, so, um, last thing. What's up with you? Uh, so last April, um, I had an anxiety attack while I was, uh, driving. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of came out of nowhere. And the night before I'd been, had a couple of drinks and partying and whatnot. Um, but then ever since that event, um, now ever since, like, if I ever go out and, you know, have a couple or have a good time or anything, I noticed that the next day I just feel, like, miserable, mm -hmm. like, a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. social, don't want to be anywhere or do anything. Okay. And just wondering, like, What's going on? How do I back? What is causing that? Well, it's two things. One is acute alcohol withdrawal, which is that feeling of anxiety and misery the next day. So having a good time, you're going to have to take a look at what really is going on there. And as a result of that withdrawal symptom of the anxiety and the sort of the switch on of your autonomic nervous system, you triggered a panic attack on top of that, which can happen. That can, it's not uncommon. The problem with panic is once you trigger panic, you tend to have recurrent panic or you're worrying that you're going to have panic, which just escalates the anxiety you have, which makes you more likely to have panic. So it's two things. It's the alcohol withdrawal and the panic, and they're both feeding on each other. So, is there a history of alcoholism in your family? Uh, no. Nobody that's had uh, no relatives, uncles, aunts, that's uh, grandparents had people who have been concerned about their alcohol consumption. Not that I know of. No. All right. Well, good. So it's not been a major genetic burden, and it, maybe it is just maybe it's not alcoholism. Maybe you're just getting withdrawal symptoms from binging a little too much. You know, there is there is alcohol withdrawal associated with binge alcohol that's not alcoholism. It's just something you got to pay attention to. Okay. All right? And if you keep getting the pan, there there are good medicines for the panic if it really keeps bothering you. You ever had a panic attack? I am almost an expert on anxiety. Me too. Yeah. I have generalized anxiety disorder and panic. Oh, I have generalized. Hey, all right. Hey, good times. G -A -D, baby. Let's good do it. Good times, right? <laughs> so, Not really, but yeah. It, yeah. And uh, and when I was your age, I had a lot. I, I got treatment around your age and was in therapy for quite a, quite a time and yep. got, seemed to have gone away. But, oh really? Yeah. Do you do you do you do any of the like behavioral therapy things still, or just no? no. I did never. I never did that. I, my thing was, as I understand it in retrospect, was uh, because I had kind of an abusive parent. Uh, I never got a good sort of connection between my spontaneous feelings, you know, which come out of the body, yep. 
and uh, a sort of an a experience of them and an ability to regulate them and understand them. I, they were just off in the distance somewhere. I couldn't really feel them, yep. but I could feel anxiety. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Feel. Yep. And so when I connected up, the anxiety kind of went away. And yes. The, the, and the panic I sort of outgrew. There was more 18 to 25 kind of stuff. That's that's the yeah. window yeah. pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Good I, times, huh? I think, I think, <laughs> I think just being able to identify what you're feeling is so powerful mm. instead of just being like, what the hell am I feeling questioning? That's what I've learned through therapists and yes. stuff. It's so, just, so that, and, and that's what, and, and sometimes I think people like you and me that are not deeply connected with our feelings, the, we're, anxiety is all we're left with or something. You know, it's, it's some sort of residual of not being connected. And part of it is also being very focused on other people. And, you know, if you don't have your feelings to guide you, it's it's pretty anxiety provoking. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it might it might differ from person to person, but yeah, I, I feel does. like I'm really good with identifying my exact emotions. That's why mm-hmm. I think I'm good with communicating with people and there's really nothing left on the table for me. It was just this, to, for me, it was just purely genetic. It's been- It, 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 it does have a genetic My my, uh, my mother's family has it. Yep. And it was something that just really, really messed up my life. But I also am grateful for it because I think it gave me the, it, it made me so afraid that I really had to like, I really wanted to do something in comedy and like do something that with my life that I wanted to do. And I don't think if I went through the dark ages of like not, I can't get out of this like, darkness at like a regular quote unquote regular job mm. i think that i wouldn't be doing what i love so i think there is like a blessing to the of course to the curse. of course that, that if you're too normal it's not so interesting but yeah when you, right when you have things to overcome you'll make choices and you'll work would, hard at it i would trade kind of though to just be normal and just be able to sleep that night. worry is not so interesting so. but but i i had panic when i was 19 it was disabling man dude when, me too oh, 17 I, I was 17. oh i couldn't get out of bed for a while and, and i did not have any idea what was going on it was man. something else good the, i thought it was having, good old days <laughs> yeah i thought i was having seizures but obviously before my medical training i i thought i was just I, going crazy, I mean, think dying. You, you have medical training and now i do but yeah. then i didn't yeah, yeah but even i mean i'm i still don't Oh, so. let's, let's talk. Let's talk more anxiety. Let's talk anxiety with Nick. This, it's always an uplifting conversation. Nick, what's going on? Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, buddy. Uh, I just had a question about, so I'm going to be going down to college next year, and I'm not really a very outgoing person, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering, do you have any tips or suggestions on how I can work on being a more bright and like outgoing person and make friends easier. Just like, I, I like the way Nick's talking to two guys like who have, have panic and anxiety for whom this was the very issue. We, I know <laughs> you, but I was dealing with this in college too. You, um, you, like you said, you got known, you found another strategy, you know, you got some. Yeah. I think, uh, especially for Nick, I mean, I think w- the thing to do would be exposure therapy skill. Yeah. Or just yeah. exposing exposure, yourself that's exactly to correct. things that you are uncomfortable with being, that's why stand up comedy is so good. Cause it's like a controlled panic attack. When mm-hmm. you go on stage, mm-hmm. you're super nervous, especially if it's like a crowd that doesn't like you. So, um, yeah, go, go into whatever makes you uncomfortable. You have to sort of dwell in that, go to that place so after a while, it won't be uncomfortable anymore. Eric is absolutely right that that most of the most of the anxiety type disorders, which include obsessive compulsive disorder, and yep. if you have some of that. I got some of that too. I yes. got it. Throw yeah. some of that on yeah, there. Yeah, we got, I got it all. Well, anxiety and OCD kind of overlap a little bit, uh, and it, it, it's about going into these environments in in ways that you can tolerate the doses, right? If you're going to go into these environments, go into a frat party and you can't do anything, you're frozen or you can just sit in the corner, that is not going to help. Mm. But you've got to go into environments where you can start developing a skill, where you can feel comfortable, where you can talk to people. Some of it may be making a a cohort of friends that that go with you or something, but exposure, 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 and develop a skill that you can rely on, okay? Yeah. So, like, would it make sense to, like, I I only use self-checkout. So would it make sense to like start using the cashiers for real? It, of everything just... like that. Any, yeah. Yes. It, you be you will be shocked at, at how much at how much just these small little changes will start to build themselves. Nadav, did you have this, Nadav? Is that why you're putting the advice up there? Uh, yeah. I mean, when I was a freshman in college, like it was just like. Oh shit! I've only grown up around Jews, and I've never been around this well, many Christians. Give this. This is good advice. So go ahead, yeah. and give it. I'll let so, you give it. Uh, kind of give yourself little assignments where uh, you know, 
if you see a str- say you're walking on campus and you you see a stranger wearing a nice shirt, be like, hey, I like your shirt. Small doses. Uh, if you're at a restaurant mm. or at a fast food place, try and learn something from one of your servers. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. Just try and learn something about so, it. So it's generally give small compliments, not weird ones, right. small ones, and then make conversations where you can. It's re- I, Low I stakes know, conversations. I had this too. I, I, the idea of making a conversation with a stranger was impossible. For mm. me. Impossible. Yeah. And so that's the kind of stuff that you got to expose yourself to. And it, 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 gets, it gets better. You can be just like Nadav. You could be running a big studio someday. <laughs> So <laughs> you need quite a few more things wrong with you in order to get here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk to Alex. Alex, what do you got going? Hey, Dr. Drew. I just had a hernia surgery yesterday, and I just had a question on like what meds I got sent home with because, man, they're not doing the trick. I'm in pain every moment. Uh, my surgeon sent me home basically with Tylenol, gabapentin, and some Robax, and and no actual pain meds. And I'm just calling to see if this is normal or if my surgeon's kind of retarded. What do you think? Well, I'm not. <laughs> I, I think the pain is speaking for you, Alex. Um, but listen, this actually pisses me off. Really pisses me off. Um, I'm going to give a little diatribe here before I tell you what should be happening. I live through the yeah. opioid crisis. The opioid crisis was perpetrated by evangelical physicians who felt that there should never be any pain ever experienced by any American ever, and pain is the fifth vital sign, and everybody who goes home from the hospital should have 90 Vicodin, even if they're a heroin addict, and they killed hundreds of my patients. Then they started putting these doctors that overprescribed in prison. It stopped in place. Now we've gone completely over to the other side of the bow where people with surgical pain can't get pain medication, which is insane. It is insane to me. You should, you, I, I had hernia operation. I've had many patients have hernia operations. The first two days after the, if you had to open one, it's a week, but if you had the, the uh, scope, it's two days after surgery are miserable as hell. They're extremely painful. Not always, but oftentimes. You should be getting opioid pain medication. You should be getting pain control. It's insane that we've gone completely the other way. As though, as though Alex, you're going to be a drug addict after two days of opiates. That is insane. And it's frankly abusive. Uh, you know what I mean? It's funny, but that's what they are obsessed with. And yet none of them have any, look, this is me, the addictionologist talking. You should be getting pain medication. There's a big difference between Alex having had hernia operation and my heroin addicts who they used to give mm. 90 Vicodin to when they'd come into the ER for headaches or heroin withdrawal. What's up? So, uh, Alex, first of yeah. all, I'm sorry to hear that you're going through this. Um, but how do you ask your doctor for pain meds without seeming like a drug seeking type person? You, you're, you're, the, the surgeons, the, some, something's biased in this surgeon. I think you go to your primary care doctor and you go, hey, it's day one. I'm not doing well. Can I have 12 tablets? <laughs> Nobody's going to get addicted. Yeah. Or, you know, get, or eight tablets or something to get me through this next two days. You should say days. the number of tablets that he wants. Just say, I, need, I think I need two days of coverage. That's all. I, just, you just, I don't want a bottle of pills. I want, I want surgical pain control. Uh, the, you know, the whole yeah. opioid crisis got triggered by people wanting to control, to control cancer pain, which was completely appropriate. We had a certain amount of opiophobia going on in this country from the previous opiate crisis in the 1900s, early in the 20th century. And doctors were not prescribing opiates to people dying of cancer, which is another insanity. So they cured that problem, mm-hmm. but they overdid it. And now they're overdoing it the other way. So it really pisses me off, Alex. I'm sorry you're going through this. But go to your primary care, and, see, and if not, get telehealth going. Call, you know, get a telemedicine visit going. Something. The you, you, you know, the medics, the medical system has been broken for quite some time. During COVID, it completely imploded, uh, and you have to you have to make it work for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I I called my primary. I'm waiting on a call back. Good. With exactly what you said. Good. The crazy thing is is. The surgeon says, like, I put a block in your abdomen to numb you for three days, and I wake up from surgery, and I'm telling the nurse, like, I feel everything. Yeah, like, it, I don't think this did it. It, it didn't. So, it, it, it didn't. Was it a spinal yeah, it, block or an abdominal block? An abdominal block. It's kind of weird. A- abdominal. Huh. Yeah. How do you get a three-day block out of an abdominal block? But anyway, did the, did the surgeon do that or the anesthesiologist? Do you know? 
I think the surgeon did, he said. All right. Well, um, so, so it didn't work. Yeah, just a sorry. lot of confusion and a lot of pain. Yeah, sorry, it didn't work. You know what I mean? The, and that, by the way, the reason he put it in place for three days is because that's kind of the duration of the surgical pain from this procedure. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right, buddy. Yeah, All right, totally. man. Good luck. Oof. Ugh. Thank you, doctor. You bet, buddy. You know, I think you have a responsibility to learn another language. If you go to another country and you don't speak that language, that's why I'm suggesting you go to Babbel. Maybe you've got a trip abroad this summer. I'm telling you, you've, you whether it's a seasoned traveler or embarking on your first adventure, communication is key to have the full experience. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. And thanks to Babbel's addictively fun, easy, bite-sized language lessons, there is still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. You have an obligation to do that. And you'll be learning so fast, you'll be surprised. I've sent Susan to work on Babbel to work on her French pronunciation and, and accent. I'm going to France this summer. We learned some Portuguese with Babbel. So Babbel.com has been a part of our life. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real-life conversations in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel's lessons were created by over 150 language experts, voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching methods have been scientifically proven to be effective. And I'm here, it works in my family. So start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off with your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash drew. That is babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash drew for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Does that not still happen? They don't still overprescribe like crazy? That's like, there's like a and, and that happens too. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's the worst of both worlds. Oh, God. Yeah, and that also happens. So, you know, my, my difficult patients go in there and start demanding opiates and, and they give them to them. All right, here we go. My name is Dustin. It's an email. Okay. 29-year-old male. I have a question about white semen. Uh, you got oh, to get the nice. lingo right down here. White. I thought, okay, white. cool. Now we're changing them. All right. Why does it take time to restock the baby sauce? Everyone has to be a poet in this, in yeah. this world. Some people are able to blast off more than once in a short period of time. So what dictates this? It's what your own. Dictates this. What nice. dictates it's genetics. It is, you know, how much it takes for your refractoriness, how long it takes for your prostate to produce the semen again, how large the seminal vesicles are, this sort of thing. It's, don't do it for a week. You'll you'll reach the ceiling. Uh, don't do it for three days and you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a 25 year old woman wanting to try anal more regularly with my boyfriend of 10 years. I'm not opposed to the idea, except I can't get past the fear of infections and STDs. Uh, that he wants to switch between anal and vaginal. I know that's just asking for a UTI, but I'm also a huge fear of STDs. <laughs> Does not seem like the most sanitary form of sex, uh, and the idea of diseases and infections really turns me off. I can't enjoy the anal play when I get in my head about it. What are we risking, mm. assuming we are monogamous and clean? Is there much to worry about here? Going A to V, right, is not a, would not be something you want to do if you're worried about vaginosis and other things. But going V to A... Vaginosis. Vaginosis, bacterial vaginosis. I thought I had that in puberty. No, no, no. Plenty of, plenty of your peers did. Um, <laughs> but uh, look, going V to A, no problem. No problem. Uh, there's really, you're risking, uh, he, if he's not wearing a condom, is maybe risking some urethral stuff, but it's really kind of a nothing. It's not, it's not something you should be worried about. STDs are from person to person. I mean, obviously, if, if he had herpes or something i mean that could be something you might not be aware of that could be passed to you but anything else he would have symptoms from mm. uh and so he's not having symptoms you guys have been having been you begin to get there for 10 years how could where would the std have gotten into the equation you know what i'm saying yeah so, the bus. And, it's, and, it's, and it's not by just you having anal sex magically he's tainted now forever so every time you have vaginal sex somehow he's going to bring something to you no, just don't go A to V. That's all I'm saying. Is it, is it? Am I making this up, or was there were there as many STDs like in the 40s or 50s, or, or was there an explosion of them? No, there were. There was actually more back then. And really, it, and probably a bigger variety. In okay. fact, uh, it's just we guys like me started talking about it in the 70s and 80s, uh, and we started saying, "I my thing was, hey, hey man, my pee burns, right?" And this the, the, everything was gonorrhea, everything was syphilis, but we always had chancroid, we always had lymphogranuloma venereum, and actually chancroid was sort of common in the South Pacific during when the, with the Marines out there. There was a lot of chancroid, wow. uh, and lymphogranuloma venereum. We've gone through some waves of that, and. Uh, obviously, may, maybe more awareness of HPV and its effect and more screening for it. So mm. there's that. I think we're more aware of that one. 
And herpes sort of spread across the land, and so there's more awareness of that one. Mm -hmm. um, but the other ones have always been around, and we just talk about it more. And it was my original note when, when I was doing Loveline back in the day was, it's so simple. This is so easy. And we've hid this all behind some curtain of venereal diseases with these Latin names, and they're, mm. ooh, they're gross, and they're dangerous. And in fact, they were all easy to treat. They were all not that big a deal. Oh, really? And, until you got to AIDS, which was the new one, and then it was not X. so cool. Then it was not so cool at all. Can we... Crabs are extinct? Uh yeah, with a question mark at the no, end. No, crabs ooh. are, crabs, pubic glass are... See, I thought everyone shaved their pubes now, so now there's nothing for the crabs to oh, latch on Oh, well, maybe there's less of it because of that. That could be. Mm. But pubic glass, um, they're, they're very hardy. They're very hardy. Oh, with people that don't <laughs> have there's a lot of, trimmers. There's a lot of homeless people out there that are not grooming so much. That's a so. great call. Yeah, okay. there's all kinds of lice going on out so there. So it's a more of a homeless disease is what you're saying. I'm not saying mm. that. I'm just saying pubic lice are alive and well. What are they, what are they called now? Shelter... Uh, Without, what are they supposed to call them now? Public campers? The unhoused? The unhoused neighbors. Yeah, the unhoused yeah. crabs. Yeah. Unhoused crabs. I don't know. Hermits. So, Hermit crabs. So let's uh, <laughs> let's talk. To, we've been doing a little bit speaking about alcohol. Let's talk to a cool, see a cool motivational guy on not drinking. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> If people ask, why aren't you drinking? Not even socially. That's a little extreme. You know what's extreme? Your poverty. <laughs> Your poverty is extreme. <laughs> Your fat, sloppy, unconditioned body is extreme. Your poor, negative, destitute mindset is extreme. It's an extreme example of what not to be to your kids, to your community, to your employees. Nothing extreme about this guy. Yeah. Man up, true lean, stuff all over his shirt and tie. Yeah, so does he mean hat? like uh, he, don't be an alcoholic or don't? Drink ever. Is that what he's... I, I have a feeling he's sort of in the... drone. This guy is extreme. And, I'm, and he's I, in recovery. It your seems. fat, sloppy, unconditioned I, body is extreme. Th this is not what you oh, call okay. uh, recovery attitude. I, mean, I, don't know what, not, I don't know what kind of attitude I think is. he's an extreme... Um, negator like he like is a white knuckler he likes that stuff he's yeah he likes white knuckling and even if i don't know if he's an alcoholic or not but he's gonna do everything to the he, he's the extreme he's going i mean he's talking to someone way. specific he's got a he's got a stepdad in his mind where well, he's there, there's a whole line now isn't there guys of of these sort of motivational types that scream at people whether I feel it's, that's always been the case you're talking, uh, you're talking about alphas I just feel yeah, like, Sigma. I feel like there's more of that these days. Who's that? What's that financial guy that screams at everybody, calls them pussies? And oh, Dan Pena. Dan Pena. Yeah, he's a gem. He Love is a guy. gem. And then, then you've got Tate, Andrew Tate now, and his Andrew, stuff. Uh, this, well, he's making Borman. a couple less speeches, I think. I, I'm just saying. I think he's in jail. Yeah, right? I believe he is. I believe. But there's that whole, he's left behind uh, some opportunity in his wake. And I mm -hmm. think these guys are kind of filling that in, no? Yeah. I, trying I, to. I see that. Yeah. And, and, I, and not that I. You know, not that I'm totally opposed to a little um, sort of drill sergeanty stuff. I think people need some of that stuff, but you can go too far with everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't understand any of those. I don't know who's watching them. Who's like sitting on the couch and then gets yelled at by a guy on TikTok and then goes out and starts a business? Right. I don't uh, know if that's happening. Oh yeah, we're we're talking incels. Incels watch these. Incels. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Incels watch the this? target market. Isn't that yeah. the Microsoft what? program? Right. For sure. Why? <laughs> Why are those guys? Because they, they're involuntarily celibate, and they're like, well, there's something about me that I need to fix to start getting puss. Uh, look then. how strong that guy looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's I need to listen to this guy. He gets puss all the time. Those oh guys seemingly have everything that they don't, so they're like, oh, he must get it. He mm. must know what's wrong. Oh. True, well, anybody, if, if, you've ever met, <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever met anybody that's truly successful, fulfilled, they never act that way. No. So it's such a sign that, there, there's something wrong, and it's sad that no one knows that. Uh, and and yet, uh, I you know, th somebody who's satisfied and fulfilled isn't necessarily into the motivational world. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so For, yeah, the, 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 buy this condo. Yeah. And so the motivational <laughs> stuff, if it helps people, doesn't have to be from somebody who's necessarily fulfilled. Uh, but unfortunately. Mm. They're not advocating for the kinds of things that do tend to end up with people feeling really good about themselves. Yeah. But if it gets them off the couch, if that's what they're trying to get at, okay. What did you say, Chad? What happened? Oh, nothing. I was it's about that guy. Oh, what'd you say? I said uh, he, it was Cap. Sus? No, but 
<laughs> cap and the other cap one. is like a yeah. lie. Okay, yeah. it's cap. All right. Yeah. See, I'm learning. Uh, uh, let's go to Wyatt here. Let's talk to him really quickly. Wyatt, what's going on? Good. How are you? Hey, we're good. What's happening there? Nothing much. Right. Just you calling in. Oh. <laughs> here, oh, here's where you go. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Um, so I was calling in uh, asking, is it normal to poop like at least three to five times a day? Um, mm. I know Oof. any is special. He poops like don't need to call months, me that word, but I feel you don't. Uh, no, you're, he's, he's not. Cousin, I, I, hang yeah. on. He took oh, exception. Sorry. He took it. He took, he has an issue with you calling him special. He's exceptional. He's an exception. No, oh, thanks, Drew. He's it, exceptional. Yeah. yeah. Uh, three to three times yeah. a day is, uh, you know, it, inefficient. Look, it's efficient. <laughs> That's right. It's inefficient. inefficient. It's inefficient. Uh, it depends what you mean by like, normal, right? It's I, a lot I, of Taco Bell. I don't know. Yeah. Why you're it, on. It's everyone is different. <laughs> uh, one, once or twice a day is sort of average. Three times a day, four times a day, what? It's all fine. As, as long as you're getting sort of not getting abdominal pain, you're having normal stool funk, you know, sort of formation, it's not diarrhea, uh, yeah. then I, I just, it's just you. It's yeah. It's, is it, are we talking solid logs? It, so it depends on what I eat, obviously. Like you said, Taco Bell doesn't <laughs> sit well with anyone. So those are, Taco Bell shits are usually not solid. Um, but, Throughout the day, it could vary. Like, I could wake up and have a solid morning shit and then eat breakfast or whatever, and it will not be as solid. So, well, I'm just wondering if I should get this checked out by, like, uh, a specialist just I, to, like, make uh, sure. I mean, you could have some irritable bowel. Look, try, try just adding some bulk. So, either psyllium husk or metamucil. Just add that in every day. Ooh. And psyllium husk. Yeah, psyllium husk, metamucil. Uh, uh, yeah, Nadav was pointing out that he had stool, stool frequency and we had diverticulitis. I mean, that can yeah. happen. I mean, uh, let me ask you this. Is, is this happening to you like before breakfast, like those three to five, or is it throughout the day kind of spread normally? No, it's, it's spread out. So, like, I feel like I have a very fast meta metabolism. So, yeah. when I'm eating, like, either sometimes but if the meal is big enough, I literally have to take a shit mid meal, but like after every meal I have, like it's pretty much instantaneous. I got a, I got right, a question so for before you. Before you ask, let me just address this. Okay, it takes about me. nine hours okay. for things to go from your stomach to your anus. Okay. So what you are okay. experiencing is something called the gastrocolic reflex, which is when you put warm stuff and extend the stomach, your colon starts to move. And so that's evidence that your colon is very, very powerful. It really it moves a lot and it moves things through. And that's fine. That's normal. Just add some bulk. Just add, seriously, add some bulk. Don't. If you want to see a doctor, great. It could okay. be a little, a little irritable bowel, but... Um, you know, just the metamucil or the psyllium husk will help with that, even if it is uh, sort of irritable bowel stuff. What's that, Danny? Go ahead. Uh, wait, did you hang up on him? Yeah. Uh, never mind. That was <laughs> a question for him, Chief. Not you. Maybe I can. Maybe, maybe, what was the question going to be? Maybe I can sort of address oh, what no, you're going at. I was just going to ask him if he's ever tried holding it. Oh, <laughs> because I, if that's the guy, what? I, no, no, I'm sure I don't want you talking to him. If that's the guy that the woman didn't want to do A to V with, then I, yeah, then we got some I, issues. I think she, got can, some I think she can hold up. Also, I feel like, I mean, with all due respect to Wyatt, I love you, buddy. Got nothing against you, but I, don't, I feel like he could have just Googled that. You, you, but you know, people, I mean, you know, you could Google just about anything they ask me, but not people, really. Some of them are a little more, you know. I understand, but I, I shit a lot. Welcome to the club. I mean, he was, he's from California. He probably has in and out You know, yeah, and, it happens. And, and his point is well taken. Avoid Mexican. <laughs> Be careful with the Mexican. Uh, so let's see some TikToks. Do sleep with these ooh, on. Oh, boy. Is that a filter? Uh, on. Now, I sleep with lights off, TV off, but everything in my face does not come out. Everything stays in. Oh. All that it comes out is this. So, Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's it. Thank you. God, that seems like so much work. You know, I was wondering what happened to the son from Vegas Vacation. Oh. And um, here, here he is. And has she got stuff all over her teeth, too? Is that what I'm saying? 
That yeah, I she, guess yeah, are those teeth out. piercings? Or, or looks like some gum piercings and oh. looks like a grill, no? Oof. I think it's like a grill, yeah. I think it's a combo of a bunch of stuff. Like it looks like she's got her what's the thing that's both on your top of the lip and bottom frenulum? of the tongue? Yeah, it looks like she's got a frenulum piercing. Oh, oh it just looks so miserable. Like everything just moves around here. Let's let's see her talking again. It looks yeah, so miserable. Sleep with these on. Uh on. Now I sleep with lights off. Yeah, it looks like TV a grill off, plus some extra stuff. But everything on my face does not come out. Now is that a real tattoo everything on her neck? Stays in. One of them looks like it's from marker. It does look a little bit. And there I, it is. Look. There I it is. like that she had to uh tell us that the lights I do sleep with the lights off. As if someone was asking that. <laughs> but it's weird how she has to smile when she's in between words. I, yeah. I, I, that looks like something to do with the, all the hardware. I, I, it's weird. Oh, my God. It looks so uncomfortable. I guess... Any well, piercings, Dr. Joe? You have any piercings? No. You? No? Your balls? Nothing? Nothing. Balls? My balls? No. Sorry. Balls. <laughs> Sorry. God damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to hide my accent as best I can. You got your fucking balls, guy. Are you trying to hide your ball piercings? Do you have any? No, I don't have any. I have my ears like a fucking Guido asshole, but that's basically it. <laughs> doesn't that doesn't that does, see this is the stuff that bothers me? Even even the eyelashes look uncomfortable to me. No, doesn't you don't react to that? I don't like I don't like anything that I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, and I feel I the, the thing that's sticking out to me most is that ace of spades tattoo on the neck well, that's 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 pen that's not right i think the one in the middle maybe it looks like she's circled something that she wants somebody to look at like <laughs> when i go to the doctor i'm going to show him this but 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 also she has a necklace tattooed on her neck with a shrunken head on it isn't that what i'm seeing maybe a mushroom like a skull or something oh maybe it's a mushroom yeah it looks a little bit like a mushroom everything on my face it looks like oh, no, a it's skull a it's a cross. Come out. what is it it's a cross everything oh yeah it goes down more in. what oh, when it comes out is this I mean, if you've seen Vegas yeah. Vacation, Randy Quaid's son, That's I mean, Thank is it? you. All right, give us another TikTok. Oh, my goodness. Poor, poor dear. Warning to all guys, do uh -oh. not trade sexy pictures with women. They will blackmail you. They will ask you for money. If you don't give them the money, they will show those pictures to your family, to your friends, to your <laughs> wife, girlfriend, whoever. Okay? They will blackmail you. Do not share sexy Oh, this guy's full of wisdom, and he's so cool. Is he's a he very in, good public service. Is yes. he in a hospital? A great question. Wow, that is a good question. Let's go back. Let's and look around is. the room a little bit. Has he got a Django playing behind him there? What he's is got, that? He, this is the guy stocking the toilet paper. Warning to all guys, do not trade sexy pictures with women. They will blackmail you. Oh, no, what you is know it? what? This isn't hospital lighting. But no, oh, and, and, and hospitals, don't, hospitals don't have arches. There's an arch there. Like they don't just don't. Or have is that, that a mirror? Yeah, I right? think it's a mirror. Look at the reflection oh. of the lamp. Oh. Mm. Oh, but I think he's got good Kirkland toilet paper behind. Is that what that is? And what's in he, the mirror? He's on his Man last leg. Taste. And what's in the mirror or through the door? Is that more? <laughs> that's like paper towels. Is that, it's like this is a paper? Oh my goodness! He has like. Uh, look right on the middle of his forehead. That. Now, someone needs to circle that. That is called lentigo maligna. It's a form of melanoma. That dude needs oh to see a dermatologist like right now. Oh, boy. Now, fortunately, lentigo does not usually spread that bad, so it's not like the melanomas we think about, but it can get bad if it sits around long enough. Is it pushing on his left eye to be closed more <laughs> yeah, than the you right know, eye? Maybe it's on the nerve on that side. <laughs> maybe that's why it's some flattening of the uh, of the the uh, wrinkles on the left side there and our right. Let's just assume that he doesn't get that checked out. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't get that checked out. Yeah. How long do you think he's got? This is the Pretty craziness big. about people and their skin stuff. They'll let stuff grow until it's just like enormous. And so I, <sighs> I imagine he'll wait till it's three to four times that size and then go, hey, I got to get that checked out. At that point, he's still probably going to be okay. It's just going to be a really problematic surgery for him. He's not going to dig what it looks like once it comes out. So that's awful. I feel like this man could be someone else's skin tag. He yeah, looks like on, yeah, on a, on a I, larger human being. I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I was on a Family Guy episode where Chris's zit was talking to him, and he kind of looked like this. Yeah, I, that's I mean, it. That's right. But he's... Uh, is, is, it, is, this your, is this a cameo that you booked? Is this, oh, maybe this is a... Let's let him talk to us again a little more. Don't share your dick pics. Oh, said. look at that. Look at that Lentigo. Warning to all guys. Do not trade sexy pictures with women. They will blackmail you. They will ask you for money. If you don't give them the money, they will show those pictures to your family, to your friends, to your wife, girlfriend, whoever. Okay? They will blackmail you. Do not share sexy 
In addition to, to wife, sexy girlfriend. pictures. I know. Yeah. I, I'm, this guy but doesn't have to work too hard to be sexy, so I would, does I would love to see what the sexy pictures like, are. Isn't, is it that, isn't that your first sentence? Like, is, is it him in some sort of cheetah print? Is it? I don't know. Um, what would be sexy with our gentleman with the greasy hair? Uh, and the Lentigo Maligna. Uh, and the guy needs, the additional dermatologist, please see a dentist. Please see a dentist <laughs> also. But that's, he's got the TikTok eye. He has the cool guy teeth. He's got it all, man. This dude has it all. Oh. Pirate. He's probably some, some sort of pirate. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> He'd be a, he should be maybe going to acting. He could be a pirate. He could be. And a character you know, actor, so to speak. All right. Because, yeah. Another one. Well, uh oh. So concludes another birthday. <laughs> oh my. Zero killer. The big 7 0. Oh, I'm really 70? happy because Good for him. at least three people guessed me uh, at um, 40 years old today. Serial killer. <laughs> I sure missed 69. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, oh boy. Well, if anybody's missing a daughter, it is in this man's <laughs> basement. Weird, weird smile. Weird, weird, like sort of unhappy smiling, which is always weird when people cover bad feelings with a smile. Oh yeah. Uh, and and but he does look good for seventy. Good for him, right? I mean, look, he has no neck wrinkles he looks, or anything. He looks good for seventy, and he looks good for a Jerry Springer lookalike contest. Oh uh, yeah, I see that. I'm getting a little, that. getting a little Jerry Springer. And and always the cottage cheese on the ceiling is a nice look. <laughs> the bacon that. neck he's got going on. <laughs> well, that's his age. He is seventy after all. Let's give him that. All right. But uh, I'm looking at the hair now. Is that? Re- it's not a toupee, right? It's real I hair. I mean, who says uh, he, he doesn't have di- to be. It's dyed hair, right? There's no way it'd be that brown in real life. Oh, no way. That you're not sense. getting, you're, you don't think this guy has murdered an <laughs> at least. Oh, I certainly could be. He's, he's got, the, again, it's that weird smile that, that makes you <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't think he colors, I mean, maybe he colors his hair, but I'm seeing a couple streaks of gray. Brand I feel silver. like he's not 70. Oh, uh, exactly. Well, you, he doesn't have to be 70. I think it's cap. It's cap again right. with the cap. Oh, there we go. Love it. Now I know how to use cap. There we go. <laughs> you got. You want to see another cool TikTok from this guy? Of course. Oh man, please. There's more. Well, he's not murdering somebody. I just want you people to know. Uh-oh. Oh boy. That I do not look like Bill Gates. Yeah, he does though. Why do you say? Keep saying I look like Bill Gates. I wish I had his money. He does oh. look cool like Bill Gates. David Gold, seventy-one thirty-five. Is, is there more? Now uh, I can't that's get enough. It for this one. Shit. Oh, man. Did Christina send that in? The, these are all Christina's. Oh, <laughs> she's good. All right, is there more? Good. So she. So you think she's back? I think uh, Christina's Love all back. Christina's all, I, I'm, it's I, a real roller coaster. Sometimes it's like, oh, a lot of animal stuff. Like, I haven't oh, seen a cat in a month and a half. This is really good news. She's back. And, and she only spent a couple of weeks with us, and we got her back. So is there another one? Another TikTok? Uh, yeah, let's do one more TikTok, and then take a couple more calls. Absolutely. Hi, Ooh. let's prepare a bath together. Oh. I just washed out the tub with some bleach and <laughs> scrubbed it all around, so that is all set and ready. Um, but before we go any further in the bathroom, we need to set up the bedroom. Uh-oh. I have my pajamas here. This is a Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild shirt, and here's the back. <laughs> oh my. With some plain black shorts. And I always wear socks because they help with temperature control. And, and then I have my head turban. And the tub she was Once in? I come out of the bath, I'll be spraying on some Sweet Breeze body mist. And I'll apply some Winter Cherry Blossom lotion on my hands and feet, as well as some Honey Caramel lotion on my arms and legs. Next, it's time to take <laughs> off some of our jewelry and accessories. Okay. Remove the flower and the earrings. Is this for guys? Just like that. It's for people that don't know how take to take baths and showers. Nice and gentle. <laughs> or, or go to bed. Ta-da. <laughs> Take off our bracelets. I like to do it all at once. So grab them up there and just yank There's them off. Two oh, okay. That's how you take off the bracelets. Yeah, I would not have known. So I would satisfying. never have known. Satisfying. Remove our brooch. So she has some male fans, right? Oh, you, this, sure to, you can only be men that are into something in like this. Yeah. And it let our necklace yes. loose. There we go. Oh, man. I... We can also take off our cover top and let these arms and shoulders free. <laughs> let him breathe, girl. This reminds uh, me of nice Bob. Nice to be in the fresh air. This is like another version Finally, of Bob, the rem- blind Bob, right? Talking about shitting absolutely and- not. What are you talking Bob about? Bob is way cooler. This is not. What Bob is way cooler, about? but it's the same thing where he she's describing. No, these- Bob is very much aware of what he's doing. I don't think she's aware of what this is. Oh, really? Well, yeah, but somebody's rewarding her for it. There's males going, yeah, yeah, more, 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 right? Like, yeah, take that. Show. Yes. How do you take it, off a bracelet? Okay. I forget. Exactly. Yeah, right. that's what I thought. I, I knew there was a perverted male somewhere in the story. So, but 
Yeah, you know, I we just compared her to Cool Blind Bob. Well, I mean, it's just that same zone of I don't know of, of describing things for guys that want things described. But it, I just rewatched a whole season of What We Do in the Shadows. Speaking of Staten Island, oh my God, you don't know the series. I don't know. It's about vampires that live in Staten Island. And oh, and you're wondering why I haven't seen this? No, no, it's comedy. Huh? It's very serious comedy. It, it's, it's okay. Um, I promise you. You will love it. I what we do in the you. shadows. It's what called? we do in the shadows. Okay. But one point in this last season, um, the I'm forgetting the names of it. Colin Robinson, and not Xandor, but the other guy. Mm. Uh, they the emotional vampire. N- Colin Robinson is the is the um, the the drag vampire, the, one that, the energy vampire. Okay. Uh, but the other guy, the master, the guy who's um, Nadia's husband. Okay, they are on a they're on a boat together, and they run across a siren, and the siren has a chicken body, and they and Carl Robinson can't resist this woman chicken, and she looks exactly like this woman. I, it could easily be the actress from there, and talks just like her. <laughs> so I'm just saying, watch that episode if you know if you don't know what I'm talking about. So we'll take some calls. Wait, so is this episode? On Staten Island, or is the whole show? The whole show is about vampires that moved into Staten Island. Wait, right. I've never. How have I never heard of this? I don't understand. Like, hey, I want to suck your fucking blood it, and it, stuff like that. No, it? no, it's it is. I'll I'll, I'll Google it later. It's hard. Better, yeah, you you're familiar with the guys, right? Oh, I was about to pivot and be like, "Hey, you want to hear about Blind Cool Bob?" Okay, sure. Here comes Blind Cool. Justin, I really like your videos, and I hope you continue oh, no. to do them. Um, and me being blind, please, I'd appreciate you um, doing them to where I can hear. And, you know, I'd like you to turn the recorder on when you go into the bathroom and oh, God. Uh, let me hear you undo your belt, pull your pants down, set the toilet seat down, <laughs> and sit down and do a good stream of pee in the water <laughs> and a good shit. Um, and for me, since I can't see, if you could describe what, what it looks like in the toilet. <laughs> just, um, just a fun thing. And... Um, you know, in other words, keep the recorder on from the begin- beginning to the end when you flush the toilet. Okay, uh, please get back with me and uh, let me know. Okay, thanks. It's okay, just, he just keeps describing. It's just a fun thing he likes yeah, to do. Yeah, I, th- I first thing. of all, I was like, man, I'm, I was judging you guys for like making fun of this guy. I'm like, man, I'm gonna go to hell. But then he starts talking about he wants to record a nice stream of piss, and I'm like, okay, I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to tease this guy. Yeah, R.I.P. Bob. Yeah. Oh, he's dead? Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's not good. But uh, we showed this to Chase O'Donnell, and she loved Bob. She thought he was the most sincere man she'd ever seen. I mean, that was pretty... If that's a character... That, no, no, that's it's him. Not, it's, that's I'm, I'm just saying, if that was a character, that's yeah. fucking the Oscar it, goes to and, and dead, I'm just saying, dead blind Bob. Yeah, he's on What We Do in the Shadows. He's the uh, piss and shit vampire. No, right? he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> But what we do in the shadows is about it's really about living in a house with three men. That's really what the show is about for okay. the first two seasons. Because there's one woman and three men, and she's always like, You guys are farting and talking about your pee pee all the time. What the fuck? And she's like, she's like being driven crazy by these three men. What is this? Who, who also happen to be vampires. Okay. So, I don't know what I don't even know how you found that. You ever, what channel is that on? Uh FX. Oh, it's oh. on uh you did you see the um Flight of the Concords? Remember that yes, show? Yes. So Germ- Jermaine is one of the main producer, author, uh, actors. Okay, so that's things. probably fucking hilarious. It's hilarious. I got you. Yeah. All right, we are gonna make a hard turn here, okay, for a, a serious call, and I want to help Nor. Um Hi Nor. Hi. Hey there, what's happening? Oh, and I called in with a relationship question. Let's do it. Alrighty. So I have an astrocytoma in my brain, which is pretty much a death sentence at this point, which I'm cool with. Uh, my problem is trying to find guys to date while having cancer. Like, when do I tell them? Because every time I tell them, whether it's day one or a month away, they always just seem to like ghost me. Oh, they never they, know when the right time is. They don't know how to deal with it. So let's. I want to hear more about you. So how long have you had the astrocytoma? Um. Well, I was in remission a few years ago, and then it came back in 2020. Mm. Um. So now I've just been kind of living with it until they figure out what they can do. So you had full brain radiation, right? Yeah. And have you tried any chemo type agents? Uh, they've tried chemo. Um, my body doesn't react to it. Okay. There's a lot of new stuff. You know, don't do don't just stop. There's a lot of interesting things they could try. 
Uh, so do take advantage of that. And as you know, astrocytoma can sit kind of, kind of quiet for quite some time, particularly if you find ways to suppress it. Okay. Yeah. So, so we don't know what the, yeah. so we don't know what the, the, the time interval is here. H how did you come to, to be at peace with it? I've always, I've never really been afraid of death. So I've kind of just always understood it's part of the game and I don't know. I'm just, yeah. How old are you now? 29. Okay. I, I admire your courage and, and your sort of accepting reality on reality's terms. It's not an easy thing to do. So I, I just want to say I, I really admire that. So what do you do with relationships? Eric, what do you think? How, what would you, as a young man, what would you want to know? You know, if somebody, I think you'd want to I'm know. A, I'm a female. Just <laughs> no, no, I understand. But as your young man, as a young, you're d dating oh. men, yes? Dating men? Yes. Okay. So, yes. as a young man, you know, dating a woman, Eric, I'm going to ask him. You oh, know, Jesus when, when, Christ. No, when, when would you want to know something like this? Um, I personally would would want to know uh, as soon as possible, just so I feel like it's a, it's a way to connect someone, like right up front. Yeah, I feel like it's. Um, yeah, that, that's who you are. It's, it's sort of like I, I hiding feel, something. I feel the same way. Yeah, I, I feel good. the same way, and, and I would argue. That nor you're, you know, the the men that ghost you, I feel like would have ghosted you because they got in too far with you and it scared them. If you, if a guy knows how to yeah. me measure his emotional investment at the beginning, I think he'll be able to sort of manage it better as you move along in the relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, have Have you Have you normally yeah. Have you normally waited? To tell I've people. tried giving it right up front, and I've tried get waiting a couple weeks just to see if it would go anywhere to begin with. It's it's always the same reaction. Really? Is it important for you to tell people? I mean, the last guy I wasn't. I was trying not to tell him, and then I had a seizure with him, and then I had to kind of explain it. In his seizure, the main manifestation neurologically now. At the moment, yeah. Are you on seizure meds? Yes. Okay. So, so can you drive and that kind of thing? Uh, at the moment, yeah. Okay. So what about, I'm just trying to problem solve with you. Again, this is, because I do feel like you, you could find some people. It, would, it shouldn't be oh, that sure. hard. Definitely. Uh, and it, it kind of occurs to me that much younger or much older men might be, for, for different reasons, might be territory for you to explore. Have you, have you thought about that? Um, I thought about it. I did. There was one guy that was into it, but he was kind of too into it, so I had to break it off. He was like trying to be my nurse, and I. Oh no no yeah no you don't want that and and so what I'm thinking is you know the younger guys are going to be into it because they just like the physical part of relationships anyway, and and that will be enough for them, and older men are thinking about their own demise and things and sort of are at ease with these kinds of issues or have had other experiences through their lifetime where they could manage this better. So I, I think you might have better results very, real young and much older, if that's something you're open to. Yeah, I usually date older anyways. Okay. What do you do for a living? I repair cell phones. Are you at work right now? Uh, yeah. Interesting. I hear you moving the equipment around. <laughs> I, can, I can hear it. Sorry. So... <laughs> So how should we do, what can we do to help Nora? What do you think? I feel like we should try to help her. Oh, man. You guys have any ideas? Mm, just get out on the apps, you know? Uh, you guys, we got to be a little more specific. Go out to the bars, you know? Go to the park, you know? Yeah, I mean, I just feel like, uh, it, do you feel like that was the absolute straw that broke the camel's back in a lot of these situations? Or was it a guy that would have, what do you mean, saying saying I'm going to die soon? Yeah. Oh, I mean, she. I mean, like you said, she doesn't. She says it's a death sentence. She doesn't know that for sure. Well, she, no, she knows going to. She knows she's going to die of the, this. She doesn't know when. Yeah, that's the thing. So I'm saying, it's, like, it's kind of like having HIV and stuff. It could la you know. She could. It could be years. Though. It could be years. So and, and she could find some chemo that holds it in place for quite some time. That yeah, happens. and then somebody who's interested in you would, I feel like, want to be part of that journey or. Or, or you know. that could scare them off if they're really thinking, oh, this is perfect. I only want to. Sh I don't want to get too involved. I don't want to stay with somebody too long. Yeah. Oh, we'll have a good time, and you know, God bless her. She's at ease with it, and then we'll go our way. 
But if you, <laughs> it's oh, it's man. so complicated. It really a relation. You know what it is, Nora. Relationships are hard enough, and this adds such a really difficult wrinkle on top of it. Um, what do you want people to know? If, if somebody's going to date Nora, what do you want them to know? What would you tell them? What do I want them to know about me? No, I mean, why would you want? If you were trying to pitch, if you were me telling a guy, hey, you want to date Nora? What what would the reason be? Why should they date Nora? question i don't know i'm smart i would like to think and i work hard and i'm i try to be funny and just chill you can fix their phone <laughs> you're never having any cell phone trouble again i, I do fix a lot of phones <laughs> I, I would, I think, oh God, this, there, there's no good advice. There's no right answer here. My, my feeling is staying on more on the side of fun. I think you're going to have more traction there. Does that make sense, Nora? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I don't even tell like most of my, only a handful of my friends really know, but I feel like if you're dating somebody, it's something they kind of should know it eventually. Oh, oh, for sure. You owe it to them. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit of, uh, it's dishonest to get somebody in a deep relationship and not sort of understand who they're in relationship with. So, uh, Nora, I wish I had more, dis I, it's, uh, but I do think uh, fun, uh, don't focus so much on the relationship part, focus on having enjoyment with people, younger, older, and, uh, and keep at it. Somebody, somebody will, there's somebody for everybody. This is one thing I've learned about, about relationships. But if you don't put yourself out there, it doesn't happen. You have you have to make the effort. You're saying yes? No, I, I yeah, I just like that you uh, you took the lead on the shit question, but gave me the the terminal advice. <laughs> I was gonna say that was really fair, Drew. Thank you, thank you for that. I'm glad you'll leave you'll leave with fond memories. Yeah, you'll you'll appreciate it. Well, I really was asking you as, as a you know because you represent the, whom she might be dating. And no, why, I know, man. I, I I I wish I had better. I mean, I can barely keep my own life in... in no, look, and I'm a physician. I have great answers for her. You know what I mean? This is, And yeah. I've seen plenty of astrocytomas and things, and they're it's, it's a nasty thing. Me too. I know. Who hasn't? Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, it has been fun. We appreciate yeah, you being great here. Time, to man. Tell people where to go. Uh, Eric where do they find Just Eric? find me on everywhere. Eric D'Alessandro. Uh, come out to a show. I'm probably touring somewhere in your city. If not, leave a comment. Tell me to come there. Uh, I filmed my stand-up comedy special in November. I'm waiting to get it back, and then we'll see what happens to it. Be on the lookout for that. Follow where? me everywhere. Where's, where's it likely to be? I don't know yet. We're going to shop it around. Oh, that's going to be um, great. And then uh, we'll see. It looks, it's looking good. Uh, follow me. Have a laugh at stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know... I don't fucking Eric, know. thank you for being here. We appreciate it Thank very you so much. much Watch what we do in the shadows. You won't be sorry. Oh, I will. If you get nothing else out of this conversation, that will be that. That's right. We'll see everybody else next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.